Hi guys, so welcome to um, our next lesson on solving systems of equations. I'm going to start by taking us back to the animal problem that we introduced on Friday. So in this problem, um, we had a bunch of animals, and animals on each side of the line weigh the same as each other. So on this deck, the elephant, the bear, and two seals weigh the same as six zebras and two kangaroos. Um, six zebras weigh the same as one bear, and then the question mark is how many seals we need to add to that deck to balance it out. Um, this is a system of equations, and our process of solving this with pictures can teach us about how we can solve systems of equations algebraically. So when you approach this, you probably approach this by kind of substituting in animals that weighed the same as other animals. So for example, these uh, last two decks are really helpful because they're, they're very simple representations of how much animals weigh. An elephant is the same as two bears, and one bear is the same as three zebras. So if I take that information to the first deck, for example, I can take the elephant out and replace it with two bears. So we'll write BB for two bears. And um, we also know that a bear weighs the same as three zebras, so we could take out three zebras here and replace it with a bear, and three zebras here and replace it with a bear. And so that we can cross off these bears, and we can also cross off these bears, and now we know that a bear and two seals weighs the same as two kangaroos. So this is helpful information. We can take that information down to the next deck, because on the next deck there are two kangaroos. And so what if we just replace those kangaroos with a bear and two seals? Okay, we also know the elephant is worth the same as two bears. So we'll get rid of the elephant also and replace it with two bears. So now we've got a really interesting situation where three bears and one, two, three, four, five, six seals weigh the same as four bears. Well, if we cross off two bears, cross off three bears, and then cross off three bears over here, now we can very clearly see, I'm gonna change colors so I can highlight it. We can very clearly see that one bear weighs the same as six seals. Now this information can help us on the third deck. So on the third deck, let's say we replace um, all of our zebras with bears. So these three zebras go, and that's a bear. These three zebras go, and this is a bear. We can cross off a bear on either side, and now we know that however many seals on the right side has to balance out one bear. Well, one bear is worth the same as six seals. So it's six seals that need to go over here to balance it out. And we did all that just by replacing animals with animals that had the equivalent weight, and then um, crossing them off sort of algebraically on either side when we had some um, animals that we could eliminate from both sides of the equation. This is a system because um, it has more than one equation, the variables always mean the same thing, and all the equations relate to the same situation. Um, and when we solved it, since we sometimes replaced one animal with its equivalent weight in other animals, that's an algebraic technique called substitution. So I'll show you how it works with a system of equations that's written all in symbols. <laughs> I'm gonna come back to this problem in a bit. So we'll start off with this one labeled number one. Um, in this problem, we have y equals six x minus 11 and negative two x minus three y equals negative seven. So um, if we're trying to find out what both x and y are equal to at the same time to make both of these equations true at once, um, we need to we need to be able to do some like eliminating of things. Now, one thing I notice is that I know what y is equal to. Y is always equal to six x minus eleven. So I can take six x minus eleven and substitute it into the second equation instead of y. So what that would look like is I'd say negative two x minus three, and then instead of y, I'm going to put a set of parentheses because it has to be grouped. Six x minus eleven end the parentheses equals minus seven. Okay, now this is just a linear equation and we can solve linear equations. This is pretty straightforward. So we'll do uh, negative three times six x. Let me start off with the negative two x and then negative three times six x is negative 18 x. 
negative 3 times negative 11 is positive 33. Be very careful with your uh, positives and negatives there. Equals minus 7, just as it is. Okay, we're getting closer. Let's combine our like terms. So negative 2x plus 18x is negative 20x plus 33 equals negative 7. Let's subtract 33 from both sides. So um, that would give us negative 20x equals negative 7 minus 33 is negative 40. Divide by negative 20 and x is equal to positive 2. Okay, so then we're not done. We found out what value of x makes this situation true. If that's all we're asked for, then maybe we're finished. But usually when you solve a system of equations, you're finding the x and the y together that meet, meet both criteria. So we need to find the y as well. Well, let's just take the x that we know, that 2, and we'll plug it into the original equation so we can figure out what y is. So if x is 2 and y is always 6x minus 11, then y is 6 times 2 minus 11. 6 times 2 is 12. y must be equal to 1. And we can check our answer and just make sure we got it right by graphing it in a tool like Desmos. So if I go to Desmos, here I've got both those equations graphed. y equals 6x minus 11 is the blue line, and negative 2x minus 3y equals negative 7 is the green line. They cross right here at 2 comma 1. x is 2, y is 1, it's the only xy pair that's on both lines at the same time. It's the one solution to this system of equations. And we just found it algebraically too. Let's take a look at another example and take it a step further. So in this question, it's uh, labeled question 10. Um, we show that 5x plus y equals negative 3 and 3x minus 8y equals 24. Now, I know if I can get one of these variables, like all in terms of the other variable, then I can just substitute it into one of the equations. But I don't have that right now, but it wouldn't be too hard to get. If negative 5x plus y equals 3, I feel like I could figure out what y is in terms of x. Like, I think I could get there. So all I have to do is solve that first equation, solve it for y. So instead of writing negative 5x plus y equals negative 3, I'm going to add 5x to both sides and move that to the other side of the equation. So y equals negative 3 plus 5x. Now y is all by itself, and I know y is equal to this expression in terms of x. I'm going to take that, plug it into the second equation instead of the y. So we'll, in the second equation, we'll write 3x minus 8. Instead of y, we'll put a set of parentheses, and we'll say negative 3 plus 5x equals 24, okay? Then it's a linear equation. We'll go through and solve it. 3x stays the same. Negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24. Negative 8 times 5x is negative 40x, and then that equals 24. Combine like terms, negative 37x plus 24 equals 24. And then we subtract 24 from both sides, and we get negative 37x equals 0. And for some reason, this is still like a tricky concept, but the only way you can get 0 by multiplying is if x is 0. If you do 0 divided by negative 37, you get 0. So x is equal to 0. Piece of cake. Next, we take that x. We're not done. We have to take that value of x and plug it into one of the other equations so we can find out what y is. So let's say, it doesn't matter, pick an equation, plug it into the first one. Negative five times zero plus y equals negative three. Um, negative five times zero is zero, so y must be negative three, okay? Just for grins, check it on Desmos and make sure it is what you think it should be. So negative five x plus y equals negative three is our first equation. There's one line, and the next equation is 3x minus 8y equals 24. Okay, and then we can see our two lines there, and they cross right here, and that's at 0 comma negative 3. x is 0, y is negative 3. That's the only location that's on both lines at the same time. 
So that is the solution to our system of equations. X is zero, Y is negative three. Okay, we'll do one more, um, just to keep the video kind of a, a medium length here. So let's go on to this one. Um, so I always look for like the easiest variable to solve for. And when I look at this equation and think about solving for substitution, the first equation is pretty easy to solve for y. All I have to do is move 2x to the other side of the equation. So if I do that for this problem, the first equation would be y equals 20 minus 2x. And then, you guessed it, we're going to plug that into the second equation so that um, we can solve just an equation in one variable. So that would look like 6x minus 5y, nope, not y, parentheses, 20 minus 2x equals 12. Um, let's go through the process of solving it. 6x, 5 times 20 is 100. Negative 5 times negative 2x is positive 10x. Make sure you keep your negatives times positives and negatives times negatives um, consistent. Okay. 6x plus 10x is 16x. Um, add 100 to both sides. And I'm not good at dividing 112 by 16. I have a hunch, but let me just check with the calculator. So uh, 112 divided by 16 is equal to 7. So um, x must be equal to 7. Next, we'll solve for y. So um, take that 7 and plug it into either equation. It doesn't matter. 7 times 2 is 14, plus y equals 20. And so y must be 6. And then one more time, if you want, you can plug those equations into Desmos and just verify that those two lines cross at 7 comma 6. For your homework assignment that goes with this lesson, there's two sets of Khan, excuse me, Khan Academy problems. The first one is not solving systems of equations, it's writing systems of equations. So if I click on this link here, it, it takes me to creating systems in context. And so you're going to see a word problem situation, and you have to pick a um, system that matches that word problem. So these kinds of things do come up in real life from time to time. I've used systems to solve problems that have multiple variables and multiple constraints. So um, it should be a helpful tool for you to just learn how to model with systems. And then the second set of problems is this Khan Academy lesson on solving systems with substitution. Um, they don't give you a lot of scaffolding here, but this is a tricky concept to get at first. So don't be afraid to click this little link here that says watch a video or use a hint. The hints are super helpful. Um, just go through and uh, do a couple of them with hints. And once you've got the hang of it, you should be able to get the rest no problem. Okay. And then I will get you the rest of the assignments on systems of equations by the time the second half of the week comes around. Thank you so much. I'll look forward to seeing you in class next time.